On Sunday, June 18th, 2023, a submarine descended into the Atlantic Ocean, never to come up again. It made international headlines, and, for now, we don't know what happened exactly. However, this is not what we'll be talking about today. This current incident reminds us of another incident that happened off Ireland on August 9th, 1973, when a small submarine was trapped at the bottom of the ocean, but miraculously, the sub and crew survived. This is the story of the Pisces 3 rescue. The Pisces 3 was built in Vancouver in 1969, with the intent of performing deep sea missions and exploring the oceans. Operated by Vickers Oceanic, she sank in 1971 along with her diver, but she was rescued by a Canadian Navy ship. The sub was repaired and was modified more to operate smoother and safer at that depth. On August 29th, 1973, she was operated by Roger Chapman and Roger Mallinson. Both men had operated the Pisces 3 together in the past and knew a lot about submarines. This mission was to lay transatlantic telephone cables across the Atlantic, well, part of it at least. The sub had dived over 300 times before this, so it was well equipped to handle the conditions of the deep sea. The job was expected to take 20 days, and it was to take place southwest of Ireland in the Atlantic Ocean. The sub began the job and used its pumps to liquefy the mud, then laid the cable, and then they would cover it. This was a job the submarine had done before, but not this deep and not for this long. It was also uncomfortable and one of them had not gotten good sleep. After eight hours of this job, it was done. The sub ascended to the support ship, the Vickers Voyager. After the tow line was connected, they heard an alarm from the aft sphere. This housed all the equipment. The alarm did not stop as it usually did, because sometimes in the aft sphere condensation can build up, then the alarm simply stops. But the sub t tilted and sank back down. It stopped at 150 meters when the tow line caught it, but seconds later it snapped and the sub sank again. The sub began breaking apart as it descended, and the crew began dropping the lead weights and stuffing their mouths with cotton to prevent them biting their tongues off. 30 seconds later, the submarine hit the ground with the crew still alive. They were trapped 480 meters down, taller than the Statue of Liberty, and then some. They quickly reported to the Vickers Voyager that they were okay and had 66 hours left of air. The men lay at the top of the submarine to stay in fresh air, and they did not speak to cut down on their oxygen usage. The Canadian, Royal Navy, U.S. Navy, and U.S. Coast Guard were contacted about the incident, and the HMS Hecate was sent over with a cable to retrieve the submarine. The Curve 3, which was a mine removal drone, was loaded onto a Canadian ship, and the Pisces 4 and 5 were loaded onto the Vickers Voyager in Cork, Ireland. Very ironically, the same diver who was on the sub when it first sank led the rescue mission. Meanwhile, the two divers were still in the sub and were dizzy. They remembered to scrub their air every 14 minutes, which means to clean the air of CO2 and replace it with oxygen. One of them was just married and was eager to get home to his wife. The day after, the Pisces 2 descended with a rope, however the buoyancy damaged the sub. The Pisces 5 made it to the bottom and began looking, but they couldn't find it. The Pisces 2 then found the sub, but they couldn't attach a rope. It dived again, and water flooded the sphere and they had to return to the surface. At this time, the air was running out, and the disabled Pisces 2 descended again. This time, the rope connected, but it was connected to the aft sphere. They connected one more rope, and the two submarine crews shared their lemonade and sandwich, which they had been saving. The lift was going slow, and the submarine was spinning. The Curve 3 was tangled halfway into the dive, but it was recovered and the lift continued. Once it reached the surface, it took 30 minutes to open the hatch, and finally, after 84 hours, they were out. But, wait a second, you may have been able to hear that they only had a couple of hours left of air, and not 84 hours. How did that happen? Well, through their air preservation methods, they had been able to make their air last 13 hours longer than it was made for. 
Chapman became a leading figure in deep sea rescue and helped save seven men from a Russian submarine in 2005. Mallinson continued working for Vickers, and both men met every year until, Ch until Chapman died in 2020. The story reveals that deep sea rescues can work but are extremely risky and are hard to pull off. Take the Kursk for example. In 2000, a Russian nuclear submarine, which had a torpedo explode inside the sub. However, no one survived. This reveals that no matter how much we know and how much we try to tame the ocean, the deep sea will forever remain the last frontier.